Welcome back, boys and girls. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. This week in math, we're going to be building upon what we did last week. All right, we're going to finish with Monday on probability, talking about dependent and independent factors. Then we'll continue with some other related topics. Four easy homeworks this week, like last week. I don't know what's going on. Kind of got used to do seven or eight things, and now we're down to four, but they are a little bit harder. And we are going to be learning some newer information starting with this week. Okay, up to now, it's all been reviewed. Hey, uh, let's cut the chase. Get to some, uh, what do you call, uh, dad jokes. Ah. All right, let's make a construction topic here. All right, uh, so which kind of building weighs the least? Ah, that's right. A lighthouse. Ha -ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. So a construction crew has somebody absent. So they get the new guy and try to put him inside. Say, hey, why don't you work on painting? Pretty easy. It's all one color. No big deal. Just uh, have you ever painted before? He said no. Said, okay, no big deal. You've seen it. It's pretty simple. You get the brush, you paint, just read the directions to make sure. Foreman goes around, checks on some other stuff, does some work, comes back a couple hours later, check on the guy. He's doing a great job, but hey, he's wearing two jackets. He's like, hey, yo, buddy, you trying to kill yourself? This is the valley. When you 100 degrees around here, what are you doing to yourself? And he looked confused at the boss and said, well, I did what you told me. He's like, what are you talking about? The guy picks up his paint cans, buckets of paint, hands it to the boss and points to where it says, works best when using two coats. <laughs> two coats. What an idiot. All right. You know, a coat of paint and then another coat. That's two coats of paint you put on something. He thought it was two coats you got? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, what do you say? You accelerated here. You get things. You understand, right? Okay, what else do we got here? Um, you all have seen all kinds of variations of cones in use that are warning you that some kind of construction work is being done, okay? Speaking of cones, what do road crews in Alaska use? to warn on com coming traffic of construction projects. You, you, anybody? Snow cones! <laughs> Delicious. All right, what else we got here? Hey, you want to have a good time? You got a party with the construction crew. You know why? Because they always be raising the roof. <laughs> All right, a couple more, guys. A couple more. Two more. Two more. What's the tallest building ever made? Ah, it changes all the time, right? No matter what they do, there's one kind of building that's always the tallest. Always. Hey, it's what you call the libraries, because they have the most stories. <laughs> you know how to read? All right, all right. Okay, last one. Hey, this one, I'm going to give props out to Block One, John. John, you know what I'm going to say? You know what I'm going to say, John? John, you said this one to me earlier this year. He said, I tell you a construction joke, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's get back to some math now. We're gonna take a quick look here, share screen. I always say come back from the weekend. It takes me a minute to remember where all the buttons are. Looks like I've never done this before. Hey, there's many different kinds of construction cones used when you guys become drivers, which is gonna happen quicker than you know it, guys. Oh my gosh, you know, in just a few years, you're gonna be on the road. I'm gonna have to retire from driving and watch out. You kids get loose. Oh, my goodness. All right, what else? But, uh, yeah, you, you've seen them, so you know. 
So just to warn you that something's going on. What else we got here? You know, in construction, they always got all kinds of, uh, the belts have evolved over the years. It used to just be a belt, a regular belt with your hammer sticking through it, right? They, they, they're pretty creative. You know, if there's money to be made, they're gonna find ways to better serve the needs of the people. Great construction belts. They used to also, the big sites, they would have construction buckets and um, other big cabinets and things. They have cages they would fill with tools to take up to the top with the crane. Now they have these great construction bags and backpacks. They have construction backpacks. Really cool. It's crazy all the kind of tools there. But before you can have a building to build to do some construction or even road work, there's always going to be some kind of blueprints. Okay? You have an architect uh, work with the foreman, the owners, and whoever else is involved. And uh, before it goes to beautiful, you got to have a blueprint. Okay? Get back to work, Sam. Okay. Hey, okay. There's all kinds of awesome pictures of all the kinds of heavy equipment that is used and utilized in doing road work and construction. But the coolest ones in construction world, I think, can look behind me over here, right? The king of the sky. Oh, oh I forgot to give props to my boss. <laughs> Bob the Builder. Y'all met him, right? Okay, maybe that's before your time. Yeah, Bob, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. All right, sky, the sky, kings of the sky. Those, you get to the big cities like your Dallas and your Houston and the Chicago's and Los Angeles. Big cities downtown is just going to have New York. You just got a skyline filled with cranes constantly doing new work. It's pretty cool. Pretty crazy. Pretty scary, too, to, to be truthful with you. I just love, th these were both artist conceptions here, but you can look up skylines and check out all the skyscrapers you'll see. And not just in America, but around the world. All right, but here's the real heart and soul of any kind of construction. It's the workers, you know. One's doing all the hard labor, making something out of nothing, right? Um, takes real teamwork and a lot of um, skills built up over a lifetime. Uh, people progress to different levels, learn new trades within each aspect, whether you're just a home builder, uh, road construction, bridge builder. Hey, this guy right here, I legit, I'm a construction guy. I was in construction three years. Count them, three. Hey, it was swimming pool construction, but hey, we still build stuff. You know what I'm saying? It counts, it counts. All right. And the coolest part about that was when we were done with the work, we were the first one to test the pool because this guy usually volunteered to jump in and cut the drain at the bottom of the liner. You had to screw the drain on and then cut the liner so the water could get in through the plumbing and whatnot. All right, good. That was a good summer job right there. Hey, there's all kinds of people involved in construction. You got your architects, your um, owners, you got your foremen and everybody else that's involved. Okay, and I don't even know all the names, but the other cool thing, if you ever watch any shows with uh, construction crews, check out the hard hats. They usually have stickers from all over different projects and things they've worked on. Kind of like the military has their badges and such. It's pretty cool stuff. All right, look at these guys and girls. Hey, lots of peeps out there doing work, hard labor, making something happen putting their lives on the line, some of them hide in the sky. Teamwork, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of jokes to help pass the time. You gotta have a little bit of sense of humor and be a hard worker. All right, what do we got left here? One more, oh my gosh, look at these fellas. That's a sea of, I salute you boys and girls. Thank you for all you've done to build America. All right, let's move on guys. All right, I don't know, whatever. I've been doing little themes here and there. And now I can't get this out of the way. Get, get, no. Ah, I gotta move me out of the way, guys, sorry. Okay, hey, we're talking about, you guys recognize that, don't you? We're gonna talk about dependent and independent as with the topic of probability, okay? Move me up a little here. So when we had these, uh, I think I can zoom in a little bit too. Um, that's maybe too far. 
Um, I liked these a lot. It helped just with random selection of names. I don't know if this accent's going to hold, boys and girls. But um, I had a cup and I always drew the, the, the names. You guys wrote your names on the, the, what do you call the popsicle sticks. Yeah, popsicle sticks. And I could draw your names out and call on you. But then I uh, made this wheel, or I found this wheel online. The cool thing I liked about this is uh, I could make it dependent or independent. Usually I started it, I think, at the beginning of the year, where once I drew your name, your name came off the wheel. And the wheel colors would become fewer and fewer. And the name slices, like a slice of pizza, would become bigger and bigger as more people disappear and participated in class off the wheel. Okay, I can show you an example right here. So if I click this in, and I'm honest with you, I don't I think it's set on. Who's it going to be? Block one's up. And it's going to be Dylan. I don't even have a question, but you you won. I drew your name, Dylan. All right, so now I can choose if I want to remove the name or keep it on there. Now, so let's just think of the words and what they mean. Dependent, it depends. When somebody says it depends, there's some other factor that's going to determine the answer or lend towards what the results will or will not be. Do you follow me? All right. So if I remove his name, that means it's going to be dependent. And if I spin again, I can't pick him the next time. Let's just see what happens. Let's pick another. Who's going to be number two? Oh, I'm so glad it landed on that. You know, I think it was Carla. And uh, Carla, she uh, was the first one in class on one of the first two or three days. She brought in her little stuffed animal friend, Peppa the pig. And we put him in a desk and put sunglasses on him and gave him a pencil and took pictures of him doing homework. It was pretty fun. Let me close that out. And after that, I believe it was Carla also who drew a colored little picture of Peppa the pig and put it on my room somewhere on the board. And after that, other people started drawing Peppa and we started putting Peppa around the room. And it was kind of like each day you had to come in and see who would find Peppa because I'd move Peppa all around. And then eventually somebody drew Peppa's friend, cousin, brother, I don't know, who's that little guy? George, right? His friend George? Yeah, so that's what we did. And uh, I would rotate different artists' renditions of Peppa from the different blocks. So anyways, I would put, if I remove that name, I had other fun things on there than just the names like the closest person to the door, the tallest student. We'd all have to stand up and see who we thought was left. Uh, closest to the back wearing green, closest to the back wearing glasses, first volunteer. And then one other thing we did, was Carla on here? Where's Carla at? I mean, oh, there she is, Carla. Over the course of the year, you know, people switch their schedule. Some people switch schools. You know, we lost some friends and we left their names on my wheel just as a hello, we could think about you and uh, think of you after you left. And uh, if it did land on your name, I left the name on there. If I drew the stick out of the cup for Carla or anybody else who switched classes or left schools or stopped on the spinner, I would take the first hand that went up, the first volunteer. Or sometimes it could land right here on first volunteer. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, guys, I'm not gonna. So anyway, let me get back to the point. Let's go to block two. All right, so. I'm gonna spin one for block two and then I'm gonna talk about dependent and independent. We're gonna do about seven examples from the homework. So I spin for block two. Oh my God, who's it gonna be? Oh. Another friend, a dear friend we all miss. Uh, Brith also switched schools. Hey Brith, if you see this, we miss you. God bless you and yours. Um, but let's get back to the, the, oh, let me do it one more time. Ah, I forgot. It said remove name. I, I meant to talk about what's our topic. Why am I even doing this video? All right, we'll do one more spin here. Thank you, Britt. I'm glad your name popped up. Closest to the back wearing green. Let's pretend that's going to be the back wearing green. Stain. Black too. It's probably Tana's green. Oh, Tana's block one. Ira, 
another one, Syra, and doing great, I heard, in the other class. Uh, she had a schedule change as well. So let's get back to the topic. We have removed name and not. Okay, if I leave her name there, and I don't click remove name, oh, it's making me because I chose that when I set this wheel up. But I can choose it to where her name stays on here. And uh, you know what? I don't think I can do it in the middle here. But if I kept her name on there, then it's independent, okay? So think about this, in history class, I'm sure you learned a little bit about America winning our independence, okay? Independence means we're on, we're on our own, okay? Independence Day, we celebrate our country being a country on its own, okay? So independent means nothing's gonna change or affect the outcome. It's independent of anything else. It doesn't need any other choices to happen, okay? Dependent means things are changing and not being put back on the wheel or in the marble bag, things like that, okay? If you're picking teams, I got Johnny. Hey, Johnny's gone, the next person can't pick him. That's dependent. Independent is like a spinner where the names stay on, the colors stay on, rolling the dice, flipping a coin, the heads and tails don't disappear. You know what I'm saying? Okay, one more for block two. I didn't get any students that are actually in the class still. Let's get somebody. Who's in block two? Mia! Mia! Great job on the test, by the way. All right, so now I gotta do block three, guys. All right, last one, and then we're gonna do the sample problems. Okay, so random name picker. So continue, that's the add. Okay, it was when I set up the wheel. Click the spin. Now, as a lot of you know, my block three got obliterated this year. I lost a lot of students, switched schedules, switched schools. I had one girl, I think her name's on here. We'll see. Can't remember her name off the top of my head. She was in my class like one or two days. Um, let's see if her name's still on here. Okay, click the spin. Where? Click here. There. There. Everywhere. Look at all those students. Ethan! Tell you a funny thing about Ethan. I'm, guys, sometime uh, next week or this week, I'm going to post a bunch of the class pictures I took of you guys doing your presentations. I thought of that the other day. So, and I can only post block ones on block one and block twos on block two, okay? They're not gonna be like on YouTube or nothing. That's a lot of parental permissions and things like that. But you guys are in the class with each other. Uh, well, I probably might need to double check on that with admin. So don't hold me to that, but I'll check. But I wanted to post the pictures from class so we could all see each other and remember how much fun we had when you guys did. I said, you guys came in and I said, guys, I got bad news. I'm not teaching today. Some people were like, yay, <laughs> I know who you are. I know where you live. But some people are like, what, what, what's gonna happen? We have a tub. And I was like, no, you're teaching today. And I took pictures of all you guys while you were presenting and I had the, uh, the principals uh, and offered for them to visit. And uh, Mrs. Mendez came and took pictures of you too and posted some of them. Pretty cool stuff. Let's get one more block three, one more block three. So last thing, I chose to remove Ethan. So on the next spin, everybody's little pizza slice, you got a little bit wider, because one less person, okay? Let me just check real quick. Oh, I can hardly read them. Let's try to see who, oh no, she's not on here. I can't remember a name, some of y'all remember a name. I have a, I have a popsicle stick with her name on it if I needed to look up her name. But anyway, good luck to her wherever she is. All right, let's see, one more block three. Okay, you, you win, you won, you know who you are. All right, well, that didn't work out. So last thing before we do the problems here, guys. Uh, I remove the name. It's the same thing as like picking a marble and not putting it back without replacing. Picking a popsicle stick or a name or picking teams. I got Alicia, okay? 
Well, she's taken, nobody else can pick her. So it's a dependent situation because it depends upon who I spin and get. They're now out. The popsicle stick is chosen. They're not going to be on the next one. But remember, then I started doing the spinners. I said, you know what? In the popsicle sticks, I did it both. After doing dependent for so long, I started doing independent. I put it back in. Remember, guys? Because I, I know how it is after a while. You're thinking, oh, I'm done for class. He's not going to call my name again. So then I start putting it back in. And uh, I've done this before as a teacher where <laughs> one day I just chose two people over and over and over and over and over again, the whole class. They were behind. They didn't understand very well. But worse than that, they did not have good behavior and kept interrupting. So I said, you know what? Hey, this is your lucky day. I'm going to get you caught up today so you understand everything. I'm going to call on you two rotating between the two of you. And it, it, and it we did. It got him caught up. I wish I could do it for everybody, but hey, y'all pay attention. That's your job. All right, guys. So we remove one first volunteer, and let's go over here to take a look at a problem. Sorry that took so long. All right. Where's my writing utensils here? Writing utensils. Let's go with, hey, I got to go with construction orange, I think, here. And here we go. There's not really a lot to write, you know. Uh, Dependent and independent, we're just going to talk about is, is the first choice going to affect the second choice? So I'm going to walk you through some examples, and there's a couple kind of funny ones at the end, all right? So it took me 20 questions with no misses to get to uh, the challenge level and get an A, okay? So let's see here. Felix and Maggie are rolling dice. I can stop right there, really, but I'm going to read the whole thing. A dice, if I roll a one, when I go to roll it again, the one is still there. So it's independent. Each roll is independent of each other. Roll two has nothing to do with roll one. It is unaffected. It's still going to be one through six. So that's what an independent is. So independent, submit. Good work, construction workers. All right, now i got to move this thing. It's always in the way. All right. There's Mia again. Oh my goodness, look at that. Hey, Mia. <laughs> Mia and Craig are picking teams for a basketball game. Mia chooses first, then it's Craig's turn to pick. Okay, we talked about that. If she picks somebody, that person is no longer there. I'm not, I know she picked me. I'm the tallest. I dunk on all y'all. Okay, I'll block every shot. I'm sorry we didn't get to do that this year. All right. So that's going to be dependent. Ba -da -da. Awesome. These are some people already did this already today because the video wasn't posted yet, said, so it was really easy. All right, Seth. Maybe Seth Green, the famous 90s child actor. Seth Green. I gotta move my picture, it's in the way. He picks a marble at random. The next word is the most important without putting the marble back. So right now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine. So depending on what he picks, he's got a one in nine chance or something in nine chance. Well, that marble he keeps he keeps out there. So now it's going to be something out of eight. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so something out of eight. So it's without putting it back, it's going to be dependent. All right, there we go. All right, well done, boys and girls. All right, here we go. I'm doing kind of a lot of them because there's a couple kind of funny ones I wanted to show at the end, just a little, a little different, okay? Students in the classroom, you guys, okay, are voting for class president by secret ballot. Sean submits a ballot, then Garrett does. What about Garrett? Does his vote depend upon Sean's? Sean's? Sean? Sean? Okay. Hey, Sean, how are you doing, Sean? Black one. Good to see you. All right. Uh, hey, Sean, you can sit next to Carter today. Ah, I think I already messaged you guys that. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to do that sooner before school was over. Thank you for being uh, well behaved and doing such good work when you guys do your work. I really appreciate it. All right, let's see you guys. What do we got here? So, do their votes depend upon one another? 
No, they can both all vote for the same person and all vote for different people. So it's independent. Super easy, right? Okay. I see a spinner. I already know. When I spin that thing, the number doesn't fall off. Now, the digital spinners we were doing for the class names, I was removing the names. This one here says she spins a spinner twice. You're going to assume the numbers stay on there. So that's going to be independent. Well done. All right, halfway done, guys. Halfway done, boys and girls. All right, Jacob. Block three, Jacob, what's up? Relationship, you are the author of that book. It's going to be a bestseller, I guarantee it. Relationships, Jacob. Without putting the first card back, he picks a second card. So he keeps the first card. He keeps it. So that means the second draw, there's only going to be three to choose from. That's going to be dependent. You guys, you already know what to do, but there is a couple tricky ones. Bear with me here. Okay. I, I just thought this one was kind of a little funny. At prom, Lila asks a boy to dance. A moment later, her friend decides to ask a boy to dance also. So I can tell you right now, this is supposed to be dependent because Lila asked somebody first. But hey, <laughs> now I don't have no Lilas in my classes. So this is nobody we know. This is a fictional situation right here. Okay. But let's be honest, the boy may not have said yes to dance with Lila, so he may still be there a moment later for the friend to ask, right? So uh, it could be independent, but no. We know it's supposed to, what they intend is it's going to be dependent because Lila asked first. It's going to be dependent. Well, and I suppose we could say it would depend upon if the person said yes or no. All right, Connor and Toby. They need to schedule appointments with the same doctor. This is another one I wanted to show, okay? Connor calls in the morning and picks one of the open appointment times. In the afternoon, Toby calls to schedule one of the remaining appointment times. So you can see they're kind of trying to lead you to believe one of the spots was taken. So therefore, Toby, when he calls, it's going to be dependent upon what Connor already got, okay? Now, it's a big enough place and they got multiple doctors, dentists, whatever this place is, they could still get the same time with different doctors, okay? But again, it's going to depend which doctor and everything else. So they are intending for this to be dependent, just so you understand there's no confusion. All right. And here's the last one, guys. Challenge level. Oh, my gosh. How hard is this? During an election, voters go into a private voting booth to vote for me for president. That's right. Brian votes in the morning and Clara votes later in the afternoon. Okay. So unless Brian and Clara are like in a relationship and Brian is telling Clara who to vote for or she can't vote for who he votes. Ah, you know what I mean? Again, you need to understand they're trying to get you to understand they are not depending upon each other. They're voting independent. They can vote for the same person or different. It's up to them personally, okay? So I just, those last three, really, they're no more difficult than the other ones. I just wanted you to see uh, some situations where you don't want to put too much thinking into it, okay? It, it, there's no gray areas to get all lost in. Um, they both vote and they can do whatever they want, so it's independent. Boom, challenge level a 92, I get 100%. Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Hey, one other thing this week, uh, you can see in the instructions, I am going to share seventh graders are posting some videos for each topic as well. Uh, they're reviewing a bunch of videos they find online and posting their favorite ones. And I, I watched them last week and I thought, okay, I wasn't prepared or didn't think about it last week. This week I thought, hey, if you don't understand how I'm saying it, uh, or getting too distracted from my stupid jokes and everything and it props and everything else. I'm going to share both videos. Uh, watch mine, watch theirs if you need to or want to, all right? Hey, uh, watch and learn. Thank you very much, boys and girls. This has been Greg, Mr. What is it? Mr. <laughs> What's this place called? I don't even know. 
Who do I work for? Mr. Douglas, sixth, seventh grade math. I, I'm lost because I'm trying to figure out how to close this out so I can get back to, there it is. Because uh, I'm always trying to, I'm really stalling towards the end of each video trying to get that. How do I stop this recording? Because I have to close out of the share screen before I can stop the recording. Okay, God bless you and protect you and your families. Um, remember in life, you're going to construct a lot of things, not just physical things like buildings, roads, and bridges, but you're going to construct your attitude, your effort, your grades, your life. So work hard now so things have the best chance of being easier later. All right, guys. Peace out. Love you. Miss you. See you in the next one.